What is up YouTube? Today we're talking about a crucial concept in blockchain and cryptocurrency and that is secure hashing algorithms or SHA. SHA! Sorry. If it's your first time here and you want to boost your knowledge, increase your cryptocurrency gains and join the movement, please smash that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future content. With that, let's hash it out. So guys, what the heck are secure hashing algorithms? I'm sure you guys have heard of algorithms like SHA-256, that's S-H-A-256. When talking about blockchain, then you've read it in white papers, you've seen it on, you know, on TechCrunch or on medium.com. Secure hashing algorithms are really just a function on the computer that allows a variable length input. So let's just say a number or you know, a word or something that has a variable or ever changing the length and takes that as an input and produces an output that is a fixed length. So let's just take my name, for example, Forrest. It's seven letters long. That data gets fed into the secure hashing algorithm and out pops 64 characters, a fixed length. And if I put in my cousin's name, Ev, I put in those two characters of data, out comes, you guessed it, 64 characters of data. So a variable length input to a fixed length output. And why should you care about secure hashing algorithms? Well, because secure out hashing algorithms are actually the most crucial component of blockchain infrastructure and blockchain protocols. Secure hashing algorithms are really the, the method by which messages are authenticated and signed in blockchain protocols. So they're super important. And I want to make sure that you know that SHA or secure hashing algorithms are not in any way, shape or form encryption. They are not built to be full scale encryption mechanisms. They can be used in a similar fashion sometimes, but they are not encryption. Secure hashing algorithms are meant to be more of an authentication method and they're meant to be super, super fast and lightweight. Whereas encryption mechanisms are more often than not a lot more heavy or computer resource intensive. And that is a story for another day. Another really important thing to note is that hashing functions or secure hashing algorithms are all one way functions. So what that means is, is that when you get that fixed length output, that, you know, whatever character output, you cannot decompose that back into the original data. So I'm going to show you a hash later on live so you can see it. And you will not, if you were to get that hash, be able to go backwards and, you know, decrypt that back into the original value. They're built so that you cannot do that. That is super important to note. Whereas encryption, you have to be able to decrypt the message or else it's useless. A lot of people wonder where the 256 comes from in SHA-256, which is right now sort of the, the gold standard and the most often used secure hashing algorithm. And to answer that question, we need to jump a little bit into bits and bytes as they relate to computers. So let me read you the definition here. A bit, short for a binary digit, see, bit, binary digit is really the smallest unit of data in a computer. A bit is a single binary value, meaning it can be either zero or one. So one of two different values. So when you hear someone talking about the zeros and ones, that's what they mean. If you have a bit, it can either be zero or one. You have two options. Now a byte is by standard definition, eight bits. So that means it is a collection of eight different options of zero and one. So if you have one byte, you have a, a line of eight zeros or ones. So SHA-256 means that there are 256 bits in the output. This is the same thing as 32 bytes, which really is 64 plain text characters. So that's how you can always remember that. That 256 also denotes something else that's really important. Remember I said that 256 means that there are 256 bits in the eventual output. 
So remember that a bit is either a zero or a one. So that being said, since there are 256 of them, the number of different hashes that you can possibly have, so different collections of unique 64 character in plain text hashes is two zero or ones to the 256 power. And that means that there are infinitely more different unique hash values or 64 character values possible with this algorithm than there are grains of sand on planet Earth. It is an amazing number of different unique hashes and this is really important for blockchain protocols because hashing is a crucial way by which transactions, blocks, and pretty much everything, including your own wallet addresses, are verified. So now let's go ahead and look at an example on the computer. So you can see that I only put in my name, which is seven characters. And this is a SHA-256 algorithm that I have a calculator for. The output is 64 characters. Now, if I go to this Word document and I paste in 1000 characters into the same algorithm, you see 64 characters comes out. It's a unique 64 characters from my name, but it shows very, very simply to you that this hashing algorithm is super fast, first of all, and that the very, whatever the length of string or value that goes in, the same exact number of characters comes out. Variable input, fixed output. Now this is where it gets really useful. If I put my name back in and I just change the uppercase F to a lowercase, it changes the data that makes up my name on the computer. So when I run it through the hash algorithm again, it completely changes. So any minute change to the data going in completely changes the output hash. This makes hashes very useful for verifying that two pieces of data match without exposing the data itself because you can just compare the hash. Not only is this more secure, it's actually faster. Think about it. Would you rather read an entire document and compare it to another one or just these 64 characters and make sure that those match up? The answer is you'd obviously want to just use these 64 characters. So why does this matter to blockchain? Really because hashing is what enables digital signatures and validation of blocks on the blockchain. Hash functions are the crux of the work that miners do to successfully mine a block as well as the method by which transactions and blocks are signed and, and identified. Without hashing though, blockchain and cryptocurrencies would not exist. And here's a little bonus fact for you. What is the difference between SHA-1 and SHA-2? You might see this on the internet and I wanna give you the answer really quickly. And the only difference here is that SHA-2 are the newer, more robust algorithms where SHA-1 are the really the older, not so often used algorithms from sort of the last generation of these algorithms. And really all that means is, is that there are more possible combinations of bits or hash values in SHA-2 algorithms than SHA-1. SHA-1 was actually limited to 160 bits, whereas obviously today we looked at SHA-256. So obviously there are exponentially more different options or different unique hash values for SHA-2 algorithms than there were for SHA-1. So guys, thank you very much for sticking around. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you guys want a little bit more of this type of video where I break down a slightly technical, more technical topic and make it easier to understand, please definitely let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers guys.